the best thing about this being our house and inviting all the people in is that we have had thousands of businesses come through here in the last 32 years. Thousands, not hundreds of small businesses, thousands that we have supported by answering phones, that we have supported by doing their mail, by helping them with their phone calls. And do you know what that has given us over 32 years? A lot of information. Information about how small businesses work. I tell you, I can see a pattern. I see small business success patterns. When people are on those patterns, I know when they come in, that person's probably gonna make it. And I can see when people are heading down the wrong path. <coughs> how, do we get steer, how do we steer back and get to the right place? Because business is so ever-changing. And we, we see, have seen those patterns over the last 32 years. And that's kind of what makes us what I feel like is a small business expert. And I can give you some of the tips that we have seen that have been pitfalls for, for people and that also have given people great success. One of the things I like to tell people, and I think Tom was talking about earlier, was just about your creative thinking process. How are we going to think outside the box? I like to think about it as think outside the office, because a lot of times we think of our brains as a box. We think of our work. We can think of four walls in the office being a box. And I'm going to tell you that what I designed starting in 1981, the center that we had here in St. Louis Park, consisted of 40 individual little box. The rules at that time were really different from business then. Most people came in at 8 o'clock, they left at 5 o'clock. There were a lot of businessmen, most of them were wearing suits. We answered their telephones, they sat and they used a dedicated phone on their desk. All of the things were what the business rules were all about of the day and we kind of expanded. And a lot of people were still working in these boxes up until maybe 10 years ago or so. We had virtual products, products for people who didn't want an office. But it was kind of like when people came in, we said, those are those poor people that can't afford to have their box. They had to do something different. And we didn't have a whole lot of those kind of people, but we, we didn't really encourage people who came in. And now working diff in different ways we're looking at people who are continually breaking the rules. The old rules of doing business just don't apply anymore. You can work at all hours of the day. You can work anywhere you want. So in, with me, how did I change the model for my business to make sure that we were servicing people, not just that could work 40 hours a week in a box that we provided, but we wanted to extend and make sure that all of you could work anywhere that you needed to get your mail, get your phones, get all of the types of things that um, made it possible for all of us to do business, businesses. One of the statistics I looked at about five or six years ago was that 98% of the businesses created from here forward are going to be small office, home office, or home-based types of businesses, micro-businesses, a lot of solepreneurs. How many here work in their home? How many here um, are in a company that has less than three people. Okay, so you have really been our target market for what it is that we've wanted to do in the last couple of years. We started by selling mailbox plans and all of the different kinds of things and we did a study with all of the people and I said, why are people choosing to work at home? People are leaving uh, corporate America and they want to work at home and I, would, I interviewed at the time, I think it was about 400 different business people. By going to every networking event, all of the things, and we would say, what do you like about home? People <laughs> loved working at home for a variety of different reasons. And if I asked you, why do you love home? There would probably be another variety of reasons. Some of the biggest ones were the commute, the dress code. I would say, you know, you could multitask. A lot of it has to do with financial. You know, it just made good fiscal sense to stay home. But when I asked people, what do you not like about working at home? Anybody tell me, number one complaint. Isolation, Isolation absolutely. Lack of peer inter in, uh, interaction and isolation. I really had to start thinking about the challenges that we have of working at home. I'm going to tell you that there's um, family challenges. You know, and the other thing is, is that even though we have five locations in the Minneapolis area and I have an office almost, I can go any place and work any day. I also have 
uh, home in Arizona. So when I'm there, you know, and I said, I'm doing my work, and I get up to get a cup of coffee, not one person greets me at the coffee machine, and I hate that part. <laughs> but what does happen is people come in there knocking on the door, and I am the kind that's distracted, and I think my friend came over to show me she had a new pair of shoes or whatever it is. The next thing they're in, they're having coffee. My work is on the, uh, the table, and I'm not getting anything done. So how are we going to put up those boundaries that we have in offices and make sure that we're getting our work done and, and do all those kinds of things and kind of you know, get over some of the challenges? I'm showing you right here. This is my personal assistant, Vera. <laughs> Whenever I get on Tuesday morning phone calls with, the, with my staff at the back, inevitably she is going to tell me that there's someone at the door, or what's, going to, what's going to happen across the way or any of those other types of things. You know, a barking dog on the back of a call is not, the, is not the most professional way to do things. I do speak to a lot of women's group, and I try to tell people, you know, work isn't something you're supposed to fit in between your loads of laundry. You know, it has to take a priority if that's a priority in your life. So I want to know with a lot of people, is home becoming your box? You know, think about the number of times you get out and interact. Think about how you get away from your isolation. Think about how many times people come in. And those are some of the things that I want to challenge you about. We just saw corporate America in the last couple of years are letting people go home, right? We've seen some pretty bold moves this year with Yahoo saying, you know what, people, come back. You need to come back because we do not get the type of strategic thinking. We do not get um, all of the interaction, the collaboration that we get when all of you are at home. You've got to have times where you come in because people are productive when they're with other people. What I want all of you to do, and you don't have to do it except in your own minds, of course, is evaluate how it is you work best. I think that a lot of people need to know, um, do you have a dedicated space? Are you, you work best in the day or the night? Or do you work best with people around you? Do you want to have people who collaborate? Are you doing things that maybe you shouldn't because you're, you're taking your time and let's say you're not good at, you know, I'll say the number one thing that I see my clients have problems with. They can't get their bills out. I'm like, you're a great attorney, you're a great planner, whatever you are, and you have problems getting out your bills. With me, it's not a sale unless you collect the cash, right? If you're having problems getting out your bills, if that's not what you're good at, maybe you should be finding people to partner with that can help you do the things that you don't like to do so that you can go out and do what you do best. Start to think about how do you work best? Where do you work best? Those are the places that you need to go to work because every minute counts. Every minute that we set aside to get our work done, I want to be the most productive person. 32 years later, I'm going to tell you a secret. We are opening a center at the airport in August. We're taking a center that we have. We're moving upstairs. For the first time in 32 years, I am going to have an office with a window. <laughs> I have spent 32 years in an untenable space. That means one that can't be leased because it backs onto the furnace room. I take a closet seriously because otherwise somebody takes my office and I can't get any work done. I know that I work single focus. I work well when I go in. I work when I can bounce ideas off of other people. I love to hear about your businesses. Talk about what it is that you're going to do, how you're going to get it accomplished. These are the things that I like to do. This is a funny thing. Where do you like to meet? I was at, where were we last week, Lisa? Spark and Hustle. Isn't that the one? We went to Spark and Hustle. Anybody go to Spark and Hustle last week? Okay, no, it's kind of entrepreneurial, really towards women, all these kinds of things, and I met with a lot of people there. Now, I have to say, with five locations in 32 years, we were probably a more established business than some of the businesses that were there. There were a lot of startups, but you know, those are my favorite kind. So I saw two women who were sitting at my table and they said, you know, we, gotta, we should do something together. We need to look at this. I would like to do this with your business. And then the one said, where do you meet? I don't know, where should we meet? Well, I don't know, where should we meet? And I'm sitting, what? Now you both have businesses. Where should we meet? I don't, we could go to the coffee shop. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea, let's go there. That's a good idea, that's not a good idea. To me, I was like, wait, stop, wait a minute. If you are both getting together to discuss business, and doing business together, why do you want to do it in a public place? I gave them a meeting room card because I wanted them to be able to come in and have a personal one-on-one. -on -one. 
And for what we charge for a meeting room, I tell them, you buy two designer coffees at Starbucks and you can probably come in here and be uh, money ahead of the game. But when you think outside the box, you need to know where you're going to meet because they're not coming to your house. <laughs> Most of the time you don't want people coming to your house. But I, just, I think that's funny just because of the business that we do. Of course, I always want to have people think where could they meet when they're thinking outside the box. I can't really tell. Can you see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that you might want to look at in your business is what makes you different than other businesses of your type. And sometimes it has to do with the phones, the phone answering, the mail and package handling. All of these things can make you appear to be bigger than your one-person company. How do you get that professional image, a place to where you can do all of those kinds of things? With our company and many others like mine, they give you the ability to work in a lot of different places and do it how you do best. Our virtual solutions plan is, a, is something that we rebranded four years ago. It'll be four years, July 15th will be our four years. And I'm going to tell you, we started out in our four centers at the time, we had 38 virtual plans. We're not going to keep a, you know, 10, about 10 per office was what I like to have. Right now we are pushing 400 virtual plans. That's what we've grown in the last four years. That coupled with about 340 individual offices that we rent in our five locations gives us people-wise, now that's just the companies, we do probably about business with 900 individuals on a monthly basis. It's a great time to have access to that business community. When people come in, we give them water cooler conversation. We have lunch and learns. We have networking events. We invite everyone who's in our network to come in and try to answer that question. What do you hate about working at home? Isolation. There's a place to come. I'm going to just give you a little bit. We talked about, you said 60,000 businesses in Minneapolis. We got a little, we went a little higher. We saw 60,000, 63,000. 454 small businesses in the Minneapolis. How many people think that in that small business area you have others that are competing and doing, might be doing the same thing as you? Uh, yeah, hello, right. There's a lot. There's probably people doing the same thing. How do you stand out when you're a one person, a two person, a five person operation? When you've been in business one year, under five years, you know what your demographics are. And it's not only about the 63,454 small businesses that are out there competing with you, people who've been with me before. What about the EBACs? Do you know these extremely big ass corporations? They're out there doing what you do too. And when they go out, they've got a place to meet. They've got kick ass business cards and websites. How are you going to make sure that your business gets the recognition it deserves, gets a chance and an opportunity to get in front of another? another business, I mean, how many in here, you're selling ty different types of services, a lot of you would like to sell something to my business, right? We've got five locations, there's 20 people, we did last year, I believe, four million in sales, that was my first four million dollar year in 32 years. Didn't take me long to get there, but you know, we're, we're crawling at it, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, we want to do business with people who have a lot of legitimacy. I don't want to look like somebody, uh, you're going to be a fly-by-night. I just put this card together here this afternoon, but come on, do you want to sell, want to sell me something? That's, it's not going to work that way. We don't want anybody who's going to have those naive type of ideas. In Minneapolis, there are over 8.6 patents per 10,000. The average in the country is 1.3 per 10,000. We've got a lot of creative people doing business here. We have 70 applications in Minneapolis per week for new businesses. In 2011, we were the best U.S. city for young professionals. Rated number four in the number of small businesses in the Twin Cities area. We're not four in the country. That means there are a lot of people out there, a lot of small businesses, and you have to think about you know, how you're going to put yourself up against those numbers. Here's some great facts just about um, business in America, just not in Minnesota. Um, 28 million in the U.S. We outnumber corporations, 1162 to 1. We are employing right now closer to 60 and over 60 percent of the private work workforce and almost uh, over 80 percent of the new jobs. One of the things that's really amazing about small businesses to me is 70 percent are operated by a single person. What happens if you get sick? And I'm not talking about like major sick. I'm talking about what if you get the flu for a week? Who takes your phone calls? Who answers, you know, uh, put, 
your, your letters, picks up your packages, does any of those kinds of things. I mean, we got to have some contingency plans because if you want this business to sustain and you, uh, you know, God forbid, break a leg on the way home or something happens, you, you need to be able to that, sustain that because that's what's paying your bills. I mean, there's a reason why I get up and go to work every day, still, to this day, 32 years later, because that's what pays my bills. And I've decided that while I'm there, I'm going to go in and try to make the most that I can of my time, of my energy, of my dollars. Okay, some really hard facts. These were 2011 facts. Of the 672,000 new businesses created in 2011, we had almost 600 closures, and of that, a lot of them were due to bankruptcy. So what can we say? These are some of my fatal mistakes that I'm going to talk about. You need to preserve your capital. A lot of people will last one or two years because that's about how long their capital lasts and then when they have to dip into something else, things start to go. So you need to hit the ground running and really preserve that capital. I'm going to tell you the biggest mistake I see people make. They come in, they rent an office for me and they buy the best office furniture that I have ever seen. It is beautiful. Can I tell you, we've had gabberts, we've had people deliver from all over. I don't even know where they get these European desks, but I say to myself as they're moving it in, I'm going to own that in about six months. <laughs> because they have taken all of their money and they've put it into the best desk for themselves to sit at. And I think that they need to refocus. <coughs> you know my best and most successful companies? A lot of people come in with a card table. They focus on spending their money on their clients, on the products that make them money. They're selfless in their approach and they don't care if they have a Herman Miller chair. Although I have to tell you, they are so comfortable. I have one myself. <laughs> but you know how I got it? Someone didn't pay their bill. <laughs> So I sit in it now, but I did not buy it myself. Okay, one, don't go on the cheap. We talked about that, Tom talked about that with your website. Your website, some of the things, that your Pat, with, the, with five different business cards, design something, make them look good. It doesn't cost that much these days. Have a great business card and a great website. When I say it's not all about you, that was my desk theory and some of those other kinds of things. There was another one I used to see someone and I said to her, um, where, where was she going to go with this whole thing and, and she, her kid was going somewhere, whatever, and she, her client wanted to meet and, you know, whatever. And you, you know, if your client wants to meet, you better get there. You know, it's great that you need to be someplace or do something or whatever it is, but you need to be um, really sensitive to when your client needs are there. And they want you to say yes, because I'm telling you, if you can't get there, there's somebody else who's going to. They'll pick up the phone and they've got a list of people who can replace us like that. So I always try to say, when your client calls, say yes. It's not all about you, not at this point in your life. When people start to think that, so, well, I have boundaries and I have respect and I need to be out of here by 3 o'clock and whatever else, and I'm like, okay, you'll be working for someone before long. So that, you know, I can see that happening. You need to value your time. I got another story, I see a woman who was in the back here and she would say to me, how much is it to get a fax? Well, it was a dollar. She had a two-page fax company. Oh, a dollar per page? I'm going to drive home and get it. Now, to, you know, I think, okay, so you're going to drive home for $2 or $5 because you don't want to give me $5. So what is your time worth? People don't put a value on their time. Every hour that you work doing what you do best, if that's making sales or whatever it is, that's the most productive time for you. You need to do that more. How do you price your product? Make sure that it's in line. Now, you can't give things away. Now, and I'm going to say this too because sometimes you can. Because it might help you with your dollars, your relationships, or whatever you're going to do to start. But weigh the things that you're going to give. Because if you start giving everything and you ask them for money, they're like, what? You never charged me that before. Start off saying, I would love to do this with you. I will give you this to try out this one time. But then my product is X and everything else so that people aren't, aren't going to know are going to know exactly what it's going to cost to get in. Let them know what you're giving up front. Inability to make decisions. I'm going to tell you, if there is one thing that I see in small business, the biggest mistake of all is people can't make a decision. Not to save their soul. Do you want this or do you want, I don't know. Maybe I should send it out. Should I put my bills out today? Should I do it? You need to make decisions. As business owners, we have to be decision makers. There's something else that I will tell you about that as we go on, but you have to be a decision maker. 
collect your, get your bills out and collect your cash. If there's nothing else that I tell people, I see people, I haven't had a chance to bill for three months. I'm like, what? <laughs> Red flag. Someone doesn't, and you know what, I, can, I, I knew that because you know what, we were tearing people a collect, collection calls on your phone calls and everything else. Sometimes I know before them, they go, say, you know, we had a problem. Yeah, I know. Most of the time we know. You gotta keep up with technology, of course. This is the one thing, we all have the same amount of time in a day. We've got the same amount of time, don't waste it. Don't waste your time, don't waste your money, and don't waste your resources. One of the things that bothers me the most about small business people, I just started out, it's just me, I'm only, you know, I'm, I'm the only one, we can't, I don't know if we can do that, but I'm, it's, just, it's just me today and we're, you know, you need to get that negative self-talk out of your head in order to get outside the box. Be proud of what you do. If I can't do anything else, I'm gonna beg you, don't say I'm only, I've just been in business for 32 years and I'm not sure we can make it work, but darn it, I'm coming back tomorrow. You know, we want people who are going to be confident about what they do. Damn it, I'm going to be back here tomorrow. I want to know who else is going to be back here with me. <coughs> this is the one thing that I'm going to tell you that I wish for you more than anything. I wish for you failure. Because without failure, you will never have success. I want all of you to go out there and really fail a lot. Make a lot of calls. Get a lot of no's. Because you ha cannot get ahead and have yeses. And I've seen it so many times. Well, I talked to three people and I didn't know if they wanted it. Well, you may have to talk to 300 people. I hate to tell you how many people we talk to on a daily and weekly basis with my staff and my sales team and everything else in order to get a yes. I want people to not be afraid to fail. We need to fail, but you need to fail really fast and when incredibly cheap if you can do it that way too. <laughs> Those are the way that I like to have you fail, okay? So some of the impact on your image. What I was gonna say is your business card, of course, your website and your mailing address. Um, do you have a, a phone? Are you using your cell phone? Do you have a dedicated business line? It might be something where you're answering. You're going to look a lot larger if you can uh, just work on these couple of things. More established. More ready to take on a project. Because image is everything. What makes you strong? Relationships, partnerships, teams of people who can come in and work with you. You know what, I can fill a room because I have 20 excellent staff people on my team and they are behind me all the way and behind my clients all, all the way and some of the networking things that we do and it's great to be 30 some years into this game and know that I've got people that I can count on. Okay, if you're not home tomorrow and you decide to blow off a day, who can you count on to take over, to make a phone call, to grab your packages? to give you some of that flexibility because you work hard every day. We have networking and groups and community. I believe that what we have is the business model for the future and all of you are in that mode right now as you're looking. You want short-term commitments. You want to make frugal choices. You know what, making sure that you're spending your dollars wisely is a good choice. None of us are gonna go back to the way it was seven or eight years ago when we were doing business and I had some great years back in the late 90s and everything else. It's not going back, I know that. And you know, I think that we have to be really cognizant of what's happening today. People aren't going to spend unlimited money and like wh wh whatever we were doing. We're going to make sure that we're saving it in case we have something else like this that comes up d during recessionary. I've had some in the last five years, my best and my worst times. Buy what you need when you need it. You don't want to get any equipment contracts. You don't want to have staff. It's expensive sometimes to have a lot of staff people. And when you do get them, make sure they're the ones you need. i tell you the best advice anyone ever gave me a long time ago, make your best guess. I'm all going to come back to decision making again. Weigh all of your situations. This is not just about business. This is sometimes about my life choices too. I know what I don't want. Sometimes I'm not sure what I do, so I weed those things out. How are we gonna make it, and then when you get all the facts, take your best guess. Tomorrow you can always change your mind. And with my staff, they'll tell you I often do. <laughs> but darn it, today I make a decision. Next week we may make a different decision, but we never sit on a fence around here. No fence sitting. I wish that for all of you. 
be great decision makers. I said to a, one group of women, they were like, I don't know. And I said, here's, here's, what I'm, here's your exercise for the day. You go into a restaurant, you open the menu, you give yourself 30 seconds, and you make a decision about what you're going to have for lunch. Start with making the de easy decisions about lunch. What's the worst case scenario? You get a bad sandwich, right? I, what I really want you to do is just practice making quick decisions. I'll have the coffee, not the tea, whatever it is. Do you want red wine or white wine? Make, practice making good decisions. I want to say that I'm going to tell you after 32 years, and then you think you're going to coast and whatever it is, we do a lot of this up and down. There were times when I rode and everything else, but business is hard <coughs> every day. That's my bad news. Five years in and 10 years in, it's not going to get easier. The pace gets faster. Everything that you do, you need to stay in tune and connected. Don't add to the stress by making yourselves do things that you hate to do, that you can, that you can offload to someone else, that are going to help you make your business strong. I'm going to tell you one thing that I have seen in every successful person that has walked through the office center, virtual office center doors in the last 32 years. Without a doubt, people who are successful work hard. They come in in the morning. They're here on the weekends. They work, they work, they work, and I know they're going to be successful when they're in here working. They get up in the morning and they work hard. They are not waiting for success to knock on their door and come to them. They are beating down doors. They are making phone calls. They are doing things and they are working every day. If you come into our centers, I don't care what center, any of our five locations, any time of the day or the night, there are people working. It's what we do here. This is where people work. And we have seen it and people who work hard always get the prize at the end. And that is like without a doubt. And that's why I'm telling you, you know, take time. Think outside of what it is that you're doing. And um, you can work wherever you want and do whatever it is you want. Now, I want to invite you into our co-working center. It's a great place for people to work. If you uh, were a client at Office Centers, you can work in any of our five locations and come in and it's free. So. Um, if you have a mailbox plan or something with us. A mailbox, our mailbox plans start at $60 a month. So, I mean, it's not like a big downstroke. And you're invited to all of our networking and everything else. So, check out and see. It's this one. We have five like it. And are there anybody, anybody who has any questions for me at all? Hi. Um, what tends to be the kinds of businesses that you have in your various first cases? We have, every, we have some of everything. Now, this... This has a lot of financial services in it. We do have a lot of attorneys. We have a lot of solopreneurs. We have everything that you can imagine. We have, um, of course, major corporations that might want to put a sales or a technical rep here. We have um, uh, a lot of technical-oriented companies, people who are selling products and services, a lot of different things. As I said, we have about 800 and some <coughs> businesses that we represent on a monthly basis. And month by month or a yearly contract? Uh, the virtual contracts are all month to month. You're right. We want to give people the flexibility to do what you need to do when you need to grow and things like that. Now, people are going to take full time office with, with, with us, um, some of those things, window spaces, because it's at a premium. Let me just tell you a little bit about why. The future's been really bright at office centers. I wrote this down while I was sitting back there. We know because our sales have been up. Um, last year we had over 103 new businesses, brand new businesses that were coming out from us. Our virtual offices have increased in the last three and a half years by 10, 10 times. Um, our sales last year were up almost 20 percent. This is where I really know. In 2010 and 2011 we had people who were in our offices that moved, either got another office, we call those um, expansions. One, the 2010, we had four expansions. 2011, we had six. Last year, do you know how many we had? 2000, in 2012, we had 45. People are rehiring. People are coming into markets. Last year, October, November, December, our centers were 100% full. In my 33 years of business, that's only like happened twice. It's the best time to be in, to start a business. There are more options for you available, more resources, more dollars, all of those kinds of things. So I want you to be really encouraged that you're doing the right thing. And um, if you need some help, if you need some support, 
you know where to find us. And thank you for coming. Thanks so much for Pat. It was really good. Thanks, Dick.